Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me here today. Walter here. Hey, today's topic is going to be when should I sharpen? And I've been doing a lot of planing, rough planing of uh, some red oak. And it's dirty. Um, not filthy, but it's dirty. And uh, we always take the approach, use the tool first, that is the easiest and fastest to sharpen. So that's where the scrub plane comes in. On my scrub plane, which is the Stanley 40, I have about, oh, about an eight inch radius camber. Okay, quite a sharp camber. And I, I think that's too much camber. So I've been slowly modifying it. I'm not going to grind metal away and just waste it, but I've been slowly modifying it. But to, uh, to quickly hone the uh, cambered iron on a scrub plane blade, all you do is put some fluid on your stone. Doesn't matter what stone you're using, sandpaper, oil stone, water stone, diamond, doesn't matter. I use diamond, it's convenient for me. So there's two ways to hone a scrub plane. First is pretty much the conventional method. You find the bevel, okay, you find the bevel, you lock your wrist, you keep your arm into your body, and you move forward and back with the edge. You're moving your body. You're locking your arm. You're moving your body. And you're rocking that edge back and forth. Some people like to do an X, a figure eight. But you're not changing the angle of the blade to the stone. And you'll slowly start raising a burr. Okay? Back and forth, side to side back and forth, side to side. Alright, now I've got a slight burr starting. That's the conventional method. I'm unconventional, you all know that. I come down, I find my bevel. Okay, rock it until I find that bevel. And then I sweep back and forth. Just like that. And I keep moving across the stone so that I use all of the sharpening medium. And there you go. Almost completely done. A little bit over here. And that's it. There is a burr now along this whole front edge. Now, the next place that I vary is most people say, now you lay it flat on its back and you take the burr off. However, <laughs> it doesn't quite get that front edge sometimes because this may or may not be perfectly flat and I am not going to spend time flattening a scrub plain blade. So what I do is I come in here, I place it flat, I stick my pinky and my thumb under the blade, lifting it slightly, and I just pull that burr off. Burr's gone, and that's it. I can take this right now from a thousand grit and plane with it. If I want to go a little sharper, I could strop it, or I could go to a finer stone and do the same thing. But I'm ready to go. So that can go back in the scrub plane. We'll do that in a moment. Now for my number six plane that I'm using, and I'm going to break from convention because I've been thinking about this a very long time. I still think, and I wish I could go back in time, get in my time machine and go back in time and speak with all the designers, but I still say your lever cap 
is a screwdriver and an adjusting hammer. So that's what I'm going to use it for. You loosen the screw on your chip breaker, you pull it back, you tighten it. Now you're ready to hone. A little fresh fluid. Here again, as you can see, I have ground this on the grinder to 25 degrees and now I'm honing the uh, cutting edge itself. Find the bevel and use whatever method you like to hone your blade. You just raise it up until you're cutting the front edge and you're raising a burr. Not quite there yet. Just about there, a little bit over here yet. Now, people ask, how do, you, how do you lock in that angle? And it's very simple. You lock it into your arm. You see that? That's locked in. Can't go anywhere. So now I've got a burr across that whole front. And there's two ways to deal with the burr. One, you can use the ruler technique. You flip your blade over, you lay it down, you've got your ruler there, and you just take a few passes across the front there, and that gets rid of the burr. You can then go ahead and strop it. You can also, if you don't want to use the ruler technique, and you do have a perfectly flat back on your blade, you can just go across the back of your stone thusly. However, this is an original blade. So as you can see, the original blade has all sorts of hollows, has rust pits, and everything else. So I don't waste time trying to flatten that. I simply use either the ruler technique or my fingers under the back, raise it slightly, and pull the bar off. That's it. And then you can hit your palm like that a few times, deburr it, you're good to go. Resetting your chip breaker. Visually you bring it up to about a little under, a little under an eighth, close to a sixteenth. Tighten your screw by hand, just your fingers. Okay, now you use your plain adjusting hammer. <laughs> don't do this if you don't want to, okay? But I have just come to the conclusion that's what they're for. And that's about it. I don't go too much closer than, oh, a fingernail thickness all the way across. Tighten it lightly. You don't over tighten it so you don't damage your screwdriver and you don't damage the screw head. And that's it. That's done. Clean your stone. Clean your ruler. Put your sharpening gear away. Now, Replacing your blade into your plane, you take a brush and you dust out any debris. A little air. And now, what I usually do is I back up my advance wheel. One turn. Place the blade and chip breaker in. Make sure it's sitting on the lateral. 
put the hood on, lock it down. Now you can go and do your adjustment. I don't know if you can see this now. There you go. Right now I'm sticking out. So I still have to come back some more. Try to do this so you can see it. So I'm just adjusting the lateral and the advance until I don't see the blade anymore. Then I advance it slowly till I catch a slight glimpse of it. I want that blade to be mostly in the center. Then I'll back it off again. Just a hair. And that's done. That's ready. As for the scrub plane, same thing. Dust it out. But this time, I will rest it on a scrap surface. Remember, it's beveled down. Even though it's just a single blade. And then you bring it in so it's seated. Put your cap in there. Tighten it slightly, just so everything stays together. And then you do a visual check. If you need to go a little further, loosen it, push it a little bit. And that would be a light cut. I'm going to go a little heavier. And we'll see how that does. That's done. So now, they're sharp. They're ready to go. So what are we going to plane? I'm working on this red oak. Got some under the bench here. It is not straight and flat. It is slightly dirty. It is probably bowed and warped and twisted, but I've cut it down to a size that is as short as I want right now. So I don't know how much of this you can see. But I lay it on the bench. You can do it here so you can see it. Let me see. The end of the board is here. End of the board is here. You can see that all. So you lay your cup. This side is cupped in this way. Or you can call it bowed up this way or crowned this way. So the concave surface is on the bottom. So now you put fingers on opposing corners and they sound like they're making contact. But the others are not. See they're rocking. So I know that these two sides when I flip it over this side and this side are high. So that's the first thing I want to know. Where are the high spots? Next thing I want to know is which way is the grain going? The grain is going this way on that side. Now I check the other edge to make sure it's the same. It's not always, but it is going this way. So I spin the board around so that we're working in this direction. It isn't as critical with planes that have chip breakers, but the scrub plane does not have a chip breaker, so it's sharp, it's a shallow cut. I want to make sure I'm going with the grain. And this being quarter sawn oak, it will want to tear out. So now, you put a little oil on the bottom of your plane and you start at the ultimate corner and you take a few light passes. But you're trying to just get the high spots off of there. And we do the same all the way down over here. Okay, I'm taking a really light pass so now we want to do some fine adjustment. Loosen that knob a little bit. Okay, not too much. And then just a, a little bit of tap. Ah, there we go. That looks a lot better. Come back here. Now we're getting 
pretty substantial cut. Alrighty. Do not lay scrub planes down on your bench because they'll be resting on that blade. You lay them on their side, away from you. <coughs> or you can get a stick. You can get a stick and you can prop them up like that. If that you prop them up like that, out of the way. But always out of the way of your work. So now you dust off your bench. We'll move this again just for being able to get into the camera shot. <coughs> and once again, you test the corners. A little bit of rock. <coughs> A little more this side. So we still can take some more off of there, but not much. So you come back a little further and you go towards the corner. And you're widening this area that you're working. Okay. The reason why I like to do it this way that's still, that's still pretty good that way, I'm getting a little bit of rock this way is as you can see you're getting rid of the dirty wood you're getting rid of the grit and that's coming off quickly with the scrub plane that preserves your jack plane or four plane it preserves that sharper longer still a little bit of rock it appears it's happening on this end in the middle so I'll come back here and take some out of the middle. Be careful not to take too much. The scrub planes don't leave. There we go. No more rock. It's supported. So, <coughs> I make my mark over here telling me this is the end I plane from and to. Flip it over 180 degrees. Now we know we can plane in this direction. If you have a wire brush handy, you can always wire brush any dirt off as well. So now I know that I got a convex surface in the middle. There's a bump here. And I know that there's still a hollow here and here. But there is support in the middle, so it shouldn't, shouldn't flex too much. <clears throat> Back to the scrub plane. Start in the middle. Take about a six to eight inch cut. Lengthen it. I'm not putting much pressure on this at all. It's just cutting. It's pulling itself down. All right. Once again, dust off your work surface and test it. Now that's actually laying reasonably flat. So, this is where I'll start putting pencil marks. And I have a choice of stopping at this point with the scrub plane 
or continuing. So what I'll do is I'll look at how the scrub plane is cutting. If there's any signs of tear out, that's why I like my light over here coming across so I can look for any tear out. <clears throat> if there's any signs of tear out, I won't use the scrub plane anymore. But there isn't really, so I'll use it just a little bit more. And I'm, I'll start further back, go all the way through if I can. Take these a little bit slower so that you get rid of your pencil marks. There's a pencil mark in the middle, that means there's a high spot or a low spot, one or the other. Depends on what you missed. And that's where I will stop with the scrub plane. So, this plane is still cutting well. I do not need to resharpen it. It's ready for the next time I need it. Now on to the number six. Some oil on the sole. And as you can see, the blade was retracted so there's no, no contact. Bring, advance the blade just slightly until you find some contact somewhere. Alright, so I'm getting a little contact over there. You hear that little? Okay, so I'm getting these really fine cuts. I'm going to advance it a quarter turn. And now I'm getting a heavier cut. I'm going all the way across it. And now I'll make a pencil mark again. You don't have to. I like to. I like to know where where I'm working and where I'm not. Now I'm going to try a diagonal to see if I have any high and low. And in the middle. And now I'm going to flip it over. And test for flat. Alright. High spots are here and here. So this is high, and this is high. Once again, test the fly. start making more contact. In other words, as your shavings get thicker and I mean you're starting to take some some serious wood off. It's not just this light fluffy shaving. You may need to start backing out the blade. Otherwise you're going to work yourself harder. See what I mean? That's a lot of wood there. Okay, now we got a belly in the middle. How I can tell I have a belly in the middle is when you move the board, it's pivoting on the center. That means it's ever so slightly hollow on both ends. You hear that sound? That's hollow on the ends. This is where I will back up the blade 
and I will try it again and I will remember to use some more lubricant. You want to use wax, use wax. I use oil. All right. No cut. Slight advance. Slight advance. Slight. Until you start to get a cut. Not talking about ever so slight advance. Okay? I'm getting a cut now. I'm only working in the middle. You have to remember this is a number six plane. Which is almost eight inches longer than my work. The work is almost eight inches longer than the plane. The plane is 18 inches. So it's going to um, it's going to ride on, on the high spots and over the valleys. So once, once I get some of the middle out, it can go longer. But because I know there was a convex center. Okay, now it's not pivoting in the middle anymore. A little bit up front here. So once again, this will be the last pass before I flip it over again. So now I'm planing from one end and one edge. And you notice this hand is really not doing much work, except at the start. It acts as a hook to bring the plane back. Another way you can do that is when you're planing, you stop at this end and you, you tilt your plane and you pull it back. Okay, let's see where we are. solid, a little hollow, a little bit of a pivot there, a little bit of a pivot there. Alrighty, so, means we got some extra wood here, but I'm lifting it before I get to the end. Light shaving. It's not the. It's not a finishing cut, but it's a light shaving. That's very good. Once again, mark the end I'm planing from, so I know I can go that way. Flip it over. Now we're back on the original side, which needs a lot more work. Here we can advance the cutter on your plane a little bit. As needed. How hard you want a plane is totally up to you. I prefer taking lighter cuts. Then again, I'm not 21 anymore. Okay. Now 
we're getting a little more serious cut. You see how we're advancing? There's still hollow there, still hollow here, and still some scrub plane undulations in this area. <clears throat> but if you go a little bit on each side, checking for flatness each time, each time you flip it over, you check Okay, we're touching here and here. You check for flatness. You're relieving tension in the wood. And you're keeping a, a nice, stable, flat piece of wood. Now this wood comes from a mill and I know it has an A and a B side because it wasn't sawn, this was actually not sawn. Okay, once again pretty good. Uh, this is more, more than likely going to be my B side or my back. So it's still got to go from here to here. to this corner. Alright, so once again, I'm going to flip end for end. Now comes the question. When you're planing, how do you know when it is time to resharpen? Alright. When you're trying to take a substantial cut, there's two forces at play. There are two forces at play. When you start the cut, you're putting a little bit of down pressure on the knob, on the front of the plane. If you don't hold the knob and let's say you're edge joining and you're holding it like this, you're putting down pressure. Then there's the inline pressure that you're putting on with your hand. Okay? You can get that energy from two ways. You can get it with your arm, which is your hand, your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder. Or, you can get it with your body, the whole body. You almost lock this in. I do both, but when any one of the forces becomes difficult, and I'm not talking difficult in so much as it's hard work because it is, it's all hard work. I'm talking difficult, <coughs> excuse me, beyond the normal difficulty. 
First thing you can do, lubricate the sole of your plane. Second thing you can do, back up the blade a little bit. Alright? What you're doing there, is relieving the energy required to complete the task. Alright, so now we're not cutting again. Alright, see that? No cut. Advance. Advance the blade slightly. And I'm getting a light cut. And I want a cut in the middle section because that's where I noticed it was high. Right there, see? I knew that was high there. I'm not going all the way end to end, I'm staying in the middle. Alright, now I did that. And we've got a stain here, mineral stain. We've got some more wood to remove here. We've got a knot here. But otherwise, it's pretty good. So this will more than likely be the face. So now I start at the front edge, advance it just a little bit more, and take a full long pass and see where the pencil marks go away. Alright, still have a little bit here, a little bit here. I'll try to start over. Again. Now we advance just a little bit at a time. We've got all the pencil marks off here now. Look at that beautiful wood. Quarter sawn red oak. Test it for flat. Little hollow, solid. Pivot, it's pivoting here. Pivot, it's pivoting here. So I'm a little high in the middle. So we're going to concentrate just on that middle section. What are we doing? We're taking a thousandth, maybe two thousandths off, hollow, solid, high in the middle. So solid here and here, high in the middle. So now I'm going to go back here and work it from this end through the middle and from the middle to this end. more in the middle, lengthening it, stop, check for flat. Solid, solid, done. This side is now flat. I have a little bit of staining here. I'll make a little squirrely mark. Just a little squirrely mark lightly, not pressed in, lightly, to remind me that there's some staining there. And then I will put my start planing here and I will mark this as face. This side is done. Flip it over. Pencil marks. So, so far I have not had to sharpen, and many of you would say, well, I sure hope not, just a single piece of wood. But you will find, at some point, and I'm taking really fine cuts.
you will only get eighty to one hundred and twenty square feet of planing on an edge before it really starts giving you a hard time. The finer the cut, the finer the cut, the sharper your blade has to be. Because in order for it to make contact and grab that wood and start the planing, it has to be a very sharp, keen edge. In order to make the cut, sometimes you need to put more down pressure in order for that blade to catch. That's when you know it's time to sharpen. Or if you're advancing and it's still not, you see how it's grabbing? You see, without any pressure? If it's grabbing and it's performing its cut, then it's still sharp. If it's not grabbing, then it's time to sharpen. Now, how much more I would plane this, this is just what I call rough dressing. If you notice, I'm not paying any attention to thickness because I don't know what they're going to be used for yet. This is just rough planing. But if you notice, this has got a bunch of staining and other rough marks that haven't come out yet. <coughs> so I still need to plane this down some more. The crisscross pencil lines are there to keep you moving in the right direction. <coughs> Excuse me. If you start over here and you work forward, you'll see that you've got no pencil line. All right? I've removed it again. Removed it again. And again, and again, and again. Pencil lines are all gone. Still have this rough spot. You don't have to make pencil lines every time, but once you get in the rhythm, and you know how far across you can go, you can do it without the pencil lines a couple times. rid of that staining here. So because I'm not paying much attention to thickness, I can just blast through this. Alrighty? That's very good. That's done. I don't need to do any more, but I will remind myself that there was some staining here. I will remind myself there was some staining and which end I plane in that direction. So this is, this is some good prep work that you need to do regardless of when you're making a project or if you're just preparing stock to put on the shelf. Sometimes if you want to you can also go through the step of edging, edge jointing.
I don't bother because I don't know what it is yet. So let's say so I, sh I showed you how to sharpen in the beginning if you need to touch up the iron along the way you're talking 60 seconds watch don't believe me? okay watch sharpening gear pop the hood pop let's get it in camera pop the hood on the plane use your screwdriver Pull your blade back. Your chip breaker. No need to take the chip breaker off, by the way. Did you know that? Leave the chip breaker right on. Okay. So, a little bit of fluid. Find the bevel. Raise it up a little. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One more. Turn it over. Ruler trick. Turn it over, pull the burr off, and you're done. Chip breaker back. You get close, but not too close. That's it. That's done. Dust out your frog. On the lateral, pull it back. Close the hood. Done. Put your sharpening gear away. Adjust your depth. Oil. And away you go. Now I'm taking a really fine smoothing cut. See that? Nice fluffy shavings. Flat. Done. I hope that's helped you. I know it might be a little long, but uh, that's all there is to it. It doesn't require overthinking it or some sort of signal that says I need to be sharpened or how many boards can be sharp can be planed with one sharpening. It varies. Every board will vary, and uh, <clears throat> red oak is pretty forgiving. A lot of open cells, open air pockets. If this were hard rock maple, yellow birch, kiln dried, and these are, these are air dried, but kiln dried and hard, it's going to take a little more sharpenings. If you found something helpful, useful, or entertaining, give it the old thumbs up and if you care to and you want to come back for some more, go ahead and uh, subscribe. That's about it for today. Head out to your shop. Make some shavings. Walter out.